are you prepared in a government to yield power back to Parliament to, for instance, have a provision in the Constitution, as there is in the German Basic Law, that it is an offence to interfere with the conscientious vote of a deputy uh, in, in Parliament? Uh, are you prepared to uh, have that uh, to have such a system? In other words, not having party whips uh, system. They say no, because if you have such a system like that, you, you government won't be able to get their their business through the door, which is true. Mm -hmm. But it means there's no accountability, and that's the huge one of the huge problems: no accountability. And in my view, the discussion hardly ever uh, but, focuses but on what that. What you're saying there is that change won't be driven. By, by, by the politicians. Change would be driven from outside politics. Now, if, if you'd asked those two politicians a few years ago, would you nationalise the banks? They would have said no, never in a million years. They're saying the same thing now about yielding power, they did. yielding power to Parliament. But, but the fact is, their strong positions are crumbling all, all of the time because change is happening, happening so fast. And I think the question isn't just will they yield power to the Parliament, I think that would be a very important starting point, but will they yield power to the people as well too, that, that one of the things that came out of the Claiming Our Future thing was not only do we need a radical change in representative democracy, we need to build a more participative democracy that builds on citizens' assemblies. But that's actually on, in the reform on, on programme of the Labour Party and in Fine Gael and something that's been proposed in the Joint Directors Committee on the, on the Constitution on a cross-party basis. Uh, I think it's too... Uh, I mean, we're all very angry politicians, but they aren't all the same. Um, and I think in the next election, in lex election and we had the, the um, uh, Sean Ardar announce his retirement tonight, you know, already about a tenth of our TDs in the current Parliament have announced their resignation. So you're going to see a lot of more new people. And well, I think we need to be a lot more we'll patient as well. I think we need, need to be, be, well. we need to be a lot more coming, patient coming as well, because I think you yeah. are going to see alternative and new voices coming into politics in the near future well, um, that we haven't expected so far. Well, but on the Citizens' Assembly thing, which is what Neil was on about, um, all, the, all those, the, the parties have agreed to something like that. So I think it is going to happen and I think that we, we just have to have but confidence. Sure, but in it. But what's the point of it? It's just a but bloody sure, talking what's job. What's the point of anything? If you now, mean if that kind of attitude, what's the point, point of anything? What's the point of anything? There's a lot of point to what I was saying to change, have a constitutional change saying that it is no offence to interfere with the conscientious vote of a, of a, a, a dog sure. deputy. And that would change the arrangement whereby the government controls That's one the thing you could do. And that is huge, would transform things because yeah. suddenly the government of the day You're would like be accountable. You're like political scientists focusing well, on electoral reform, you I'm think that one that this one thing will sort everything. It's not one answer to one question. All right. It's but a thousand and without answers to that, a thousand questions. We're the same old, same old, with the Maybe government controlling the doll and no accountability in the part of the government. Government basically does what it likes in this country and is able to drive it through the but doll yeah. because of the whip system. Yeah, but another but thing that we should have to be completely depowered in this country. They have no power in this country. I mean, Absolutely. The most, the most shocking example of that was <laughs> that we agreed the memorandum of understanding. We put forward the national recovery plan. We've had this budget without an election. No, that, that was true. And, and we have, and we have today no, possibly no. the greatest example of that. Even though there's election pending, we have the Finna Fall backbenchers sat there today and watched the um, social welfare uh, voted uh, for the bill, uh, having knowing that people on the lowest income had lost lost out. Completely. And we actually closed the door on, 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 a, on the lesser well-off in our society. And they sat there, and knowing that there's an election coming anyway, they didn't even have the mindset or the quality or the sense of nobility to actually say no, enough is enough. So under Vincent's system, they would be able to defeat that bill? Yes. And you wouldn't have a budget. So, so they would have voted for a budget two days ago, or you say yesterday, and then you would, each of the component parts of the budget would then fall. Is that your Well, I, I actually have a more That's radical idea than that. Yeah. And, and it is that, that if 100,000 citizens sign a petition that, uh, demanding that a particular measure uh, goes to a referendum of the people, then it goes to a referendum That's of the, the people, and the people's decision is binding. Now, you, you certainly would have a mm -hmm. situation whereby that budget wouldn't have, be, wouldn't have passed, and the <laughs> IMF EU uh, arrangement would have happened. And there would be chaos that for a while with such an arrangement. For a while, is it? There would be, yes. But it would be better. Uh, Only a while. But, but, after, but we have found that the people are not stupid. Yeah, and the exactly. problem is that we have, the people have uh, handed over all political mm. decision making to a political class. They run the whole thing, and the people are really an, an adjunct. And an I'll add to that. I'll add to that. That should change. The but people should be much more involved. That is part of the Gale proposals, uh, from what I've seen, and that's actually going back where your idea is coming. Is not actually a new idea. That was in of the course. that was in the Constitution of the First All in 1922. Um, and I think that's something that uh, is being looked at in the UK as well. And there was actually part of the Lisbon referendum to have a petition system to bring matters of attention. And the, people, and the, the, 
it is. I mean, what the you're saying, been treated as a joke. But what you're arguing is, is what I'm saying is we, we need to reform representative democracy, but we need to build participative democracy yes. so that people have yes, that sort of, of course. Say. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. I don't think it's convincing enough for me yet to just see it in, in some party manifestos, to, 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 to be honest. I, mm -hmm. I, I think I, I'll accept those what you say, Elaine. Aren't in power, I accept so. what you say, Elaine, when I see it in the programme for government in, in terms yeah, of is there real true. political yeah. commitment to reform the system. But I, be I believe I, I am that very the dubious, are... I am very dubious that there is. And, 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 and I think what is important is to build pressure from outside of politics to ensure that there is. And that Brian might have Con happened in, in this election. Brian Conn made a very good election. point, as a good debating point in the Dáil. I, I thought he was impressive, actually, in the Dáil in the last few days. Um, that, that uh, the two parties that are planning on being to government together are proposing wildly different r resolutions mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. our problems. Uh, Fine Gael saying no tax mm -hmm. increases and uh, Labour saying no expenditure cuts. Um, but, uh, and he's, it's a debating point to point out that there is a huge gulf between the two parties in this issue. But we all know is no problem at all, part of problem, because both of them will renege on both those problems when it comes to getting into office, because the point of politics here is jobs, getting into ministerial jobs, that's the point of politics. That's the whole issue of it. And of course it's dressed up as, oh, of course we're getting to jobs in order to do things and change things. And all that. No. The number one objective is to get the jobs. Mm. And it's, like, it's you sort of give up a hope when you well, the, appreciate that. And the key bit, therefore, is what's in the programme for government and what actually gets, gets implemented, not what's promised be, before, yes, before yeah, the election. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's the way. But the other do bit is, I don't, I don't think as well, though, that you know, in terms of the situation we're in, if we're just focusing on, on reforming the political system, that that's what's going to move us out. I think we've got to take a much broader perspective well, of what has to change. It's reforming education, it's looking at the, the public economy, sector, the way it's we organise the economy. It's, but this it's is a, a real opportunity because for the first time in, in any generation we have uh, um, you know, one of the youngest populations across the OECD, we're one of the most educated populations, we're one of the most mobile uh, populations and it, like I look at my parents' generation when on one shoulder they had the, the, the burden of nationalism and, and views on the north um, and crouching on public debate and then on the other you know um, uh, Catholicism de te defining how people thought and what they did and so for the first time ever you have a generation that's been well you know burdened by debt but uh, unburdened by those those kind but of philosophies. But for the first ideology. time. But you, by yeah. the first time you also. Burdened by ideology mm -hmm. which is and just they replace one ideology by another ideology and the ideology people are burdened with now is there is no alternative that you can't have a radically different society Society, you can't have a fair society, an equal society. People think the idea of equality is daft, that it's just some pie in the sky thing and they talk about communism. You want communism and you want dictatorship and all that stuff. The, the, well, this well, is a I, burden I, of ideology. I saw, it is absolutely a burden of ideology and I saw you making the point in one of your programmes about the importance of income equality and I heard, I heard you being accused of are you a communist in a way? And such nonsense in, in terms of in income equality was a big thing that came out of the Claiming a Future event. It is something we can move towards with ease. People are very angry at some of the huge wages that, 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 that people are taking. So instead of focusing on minimum wages and addressing minimum wages, we should be working at maximum wages and, and bringing, those, bringing those down. And why we should is because it, it is good for society. We will have fewer health problems in society. We'll have fewer social problems in society. We'll have better educational attainment. We know all this from research, and yet we refuse so you, sorry, you, under, under, your, sorry, under your new system, where any party that, go, that comes out of, a, of an a general election going into power together will have to go into that general election agreeing their entire platform well in advance. Under your system, where there is no party whip system involved whatsoever, and under your system, where if you go off and get 100,000 signatures, you can have a referendum on it and you want, who exactly is going to run the country under people. your system? The people. Oh, people. What people? Yeah. The people. Oh, the, people. The sovereign people right. of the country. That's yeah. the most, That's called democracy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sovereign people so are supposed moment, to have, The whole the idea these, was the, that, the we got, elect. that we got... The whole idea of democracy was that instead of people being subjects, they would be sovereign as well as subjects, that they would, right. that the people themselves would decide the basic issues to do with our, the management of our society. But it hasn't happened because we have subcontracted the, the running of our society and our sovereignty to a political class. And that has robbed the people Ooh, of any... Elect. Elect. But, but the people the only, elect. But, the only, but, you know, the only participation... the dollar, the, no, the, the messenger right. of the people. Yeah, but That's the only right. participation that people are allowed is a vote every five years on That's the right. basis of manifestos that nobody believes because they'll be changed when the programme right, government. I'm, That's I'm just not curious who, who's, who's not going to run this, to the this country. So every time we want to take a decision, 
we what? We put out a thing on Twitter and get four million people to respond to us, do well, we? Is that uh, it? Yes, you can, you can ridicule the idea. The, I'm, yes. not, I'm not just Listen, asking you a logical just, question. Uh, yes. on, on the your system, who's, uh, who's right. running the country? I'll, I'll reply to your question. And it's, Who do we send to a European Council meeting next week, then? Uh, just, just, just a minute. It's I'm an, just curious. It's um, that when universal suffrage was first proposed, people laughed at it and ridiculed it in the way that you ridiculing the idea of participatory, uh, participatory democracy. People have uh, that there was there was an idea that the idea of letting people decide who should run the country is stupid is, is ridiculous because people are too stupid; mm -hmm. they don't understand the issues. That was the argument against universal uh, uh, universal suffrage. We got over that, but we still have a hangover, and you 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 have a hangover mm -hmm. that you you scorn and you make you make a laugh of the idea. Question. You make a laugh of the idea of people actually deciding important right. things mm -hmm. because they're not able to. They're too <coughs> stupid. <coughs> Issues no, are too complex. I mean, yeah, 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 who's going to do it? Who, yeah, but, uh, who is I in think, charge I'd of like this this country of of the people? Who is like the Who's the person who's going to implement? Does a budget have to be introduced on an annual basis, or do we have one of your 100,000? But isn't the no, thing thin on? I mean, you're right, him on one second. Who's it's in charge? It's, it's, it's about, about who has influence in, 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 in the country. And at the moment, influence is completely centred on a small group of men, essentially, and one woman uh, in, 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 in power. This is about broadening influence well, and about people having influence on the decisions that impact by on the them. OECD, uh, where they look at uh, things like regulatory impact analysis and policy impact analysis, and over a number of years they've looked at the Irish system, and they do it in Canada very well. So what they do, essentially, is what your idea, they put the policy up on the internet. On a, I have a friend who works in the civil service in Canada, and he says, when we put the policy ideas up on a, on a for, for legislation on a Friday evening, you should see the internet, uh, the, 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 the hits go massively high. And then what happens That'd is. That'd be called democracy by tweet, power by tweeting. Mm. Uh, well, no, 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 you're being unfair. You're being unfair. No, let me finish. Uh, no, we'll get no, around no, no, to saying no, that no, in a moment. No, yeah. no, let me finish. And then, uh, then what happens is, um, and it's a practice that's, uh, that's done in many European countries, um, but Canada's one of the best examples. And then people come on and they make amendments to the legislation. Then the civil servants and the politicians respond to those amendments and then they make more amendments. So you do have, it's more uh, what you're going on about, a more participatory form of making policy and having as diverse voices as possible. And then the, the legislation goes into the Parliament and then it's debated. But before it goes to that point, the, it's very easy to see who has uh, influence. It's very that's easy it. to see what, how that's the legislation is, is, is put together. Yeah. And like, it's, it's something that's worked very positively in Canada, given that they're one of the only countries in the world and that's not in recession. So I think that it's something we I mean, should look at, been, and which the OECD been. have asked us to look at over many years, but we've ignored. I, what I've noticed anyway over the last few years in Ireland that, that the people have been considered stupid. You're right about Vincent. They have been looked at as stupid. They've been considered stupid. We have politicians. We had Mary Hannafin telling us that she didn't tell us about parts of, the, of, of what was going on financially because we wouldn't understand. If people understand. They are not stupid. They know exactly what's going on. The banks held them back because they decided that there was a certain language, like language like quarantine, redeeming and toxic debts. Once people realised it was they had spent all our money and there was nothing left, they were quite able to understand how their houses were run and how this house, the House of Ireland, was running to the ground. So there is a moment where... The, but I still go back to my main point, and I don't necessarily agree with you, because having worked with young people you know, over the last 20 years, in the last 10 years, young people between the ages of, of 18 and 25 will run away from politics because they do not see it as something that encompasses them or that gives them any hope well, run, or any they vision. They run away from the type of politics that yes, of course, because that's an old way of And politics. it is bringing and back I, I, a sense a, of belief. You can have all the things lecturer, you want, and there are thousands of people. In, and, and, and lecturing people who are 18, 19, 20, 21 years of age, I'm nothing but extremely impressed by the students and how active they are in all different types of society. And going back to what Niall was talking about, de, 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 uh, participation. Well, maybe in your just, area. No, in not just area. in my area, and that's unfair, but it's not, participation is not, so, is not just participation uh, traditionally defined in, in a political party. It's participation mm. in civil society, right. it's participation but in But I understand that, but you will and not get that to begin unless you start with belief. But it is You'll beginning. get nowhere. You'll it get no beginning. road to recovery unless people have beginning. an inter... Yes, and I don't disagree with you, but you've got to start with an internal belief. And at the moment in Ireland, there is nothing but disbelief. That is what... And clay feet. And that's what we're looking at. Maybe Finn on it is a good place to start. No, but the other, the other bit about that, though, as well, when you're talking about young people going into, in, in, into politics, is 
is politics is a very much a closed shop. It, it's extremely difficult to get in unless you're connected or in, in a family way. Or you have or, money. Or, or in, or have money or, or, or in some way. Well, I have to tell you, we've got to go to a break. Before we go to a break, yeah, okay. and, and, go and to a break I, I just up. want to give uh, Fernand uh, an opportunity to ridicule me a little further. I'm also in favour. <laughs> <I'm all, laughs> and you can take you can up a smart remark for this during the break. I'm also in favour of term limits. Nobody gets elected to the doll more than twice. It involves far more people in, in the political system uh, and would get rid of this political class thing. All right, we'll talk more about this in preview tomorrow morning's newspapers after the break. And also, Finn will have, uh, will uh, ridicule me a little more. Thank you. Join us. <laughs>